What happened when you clicked tweet on that message in 2021? The that, link that led all this to come down. I mean, I mean, I mean, like you click, like you click the button. Then did you immediately start seeing responses, or did, was it a day later? You woke up, you checked your DMs, and you're like, "Wow, I'm in deep shit." It was. It was. It wasn't like like a a bomb. It 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 kind of grew and grew, and I thought, "Oh no, just leave it." It'll it'll die like it can't but then just kept going and it was over the course of a weekend and i just thought oh it would die but then it just kept growing and going up all the trending lists in, in certainly in my country and i think in this country and by the end of the weekend so just for your listeners who don't know i tweeted i was tweeting about books through the pandemic that i'd right. been reading to my not very many followers on twitter i had the fact 3000 followers so not really anyone this tweet I tweeted about a book called Unmasked by Andy No, so an American conservative journalist, um, Vietnamese American, and uh, it documents the BLM riots of 2020, the 19 people killed in the first 14 days. It documents all the Antifa behavior, including the whole month of June 2020 when the Portland federal courthouse was under siege, under insurrection, lit, like technically insurrection. And I, it, I don't know how, but it, it blew up. Maybe I was, I, in fact, not maybe, I was naive into how Twitter worked. And, you know, you don't get to choose what hill you die on. And I was quite, frust it's annoying when you die on what might be a molehill. Um, but it, it what, in the, so from the point of view of the music industry, like BLM, everyone supported, like if you remember Black Square Tuesday, like you had to put out, a black square that was they they erected a picket line that if you didn't you couldn't not if you didn't post a black square you were against it and th th look up what ha happened to the band hansen they posted a, a a black square like a day late or something i can't remember exact details and they got you know in all sorts of trouble for it it was it, the, the hysteria at that time wait was, did mumford and sons post anything do you remember i i think um yeah i think we did right um and I wouldn't have necessarily, I was pretty affected by the George Floyd thing, to be honest, and, and pretty emotional about it. Um, I, I, I would say I had a slightly more nuanced take that I, was, I, I didn't support Black Lives Matter, the organization. Right. I'd read all the literature, Patrice Khan right. Colors. Before that, I was living in New York. Everyone was talking about BLM and these kind of things. So I, I was brushed up. I knew that they were a Marxist organization. I knew that um, it was anti-family. Uh, I... I if I didn't know, I was soon to know that they were anti-Israel, and you know, um, I, pr I I knew that they were extreme. Yeah. And then look what ha look what they did with the money. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you couldn't, you couldn't. I didn't appreciate that this topic. It was a slightly different story in England. I didn't quite appreciate how divisive the issues here in America. And but <laughs> oh, by the end of two days, it was a segment on Tucker and the View, and I was like, what the hell? But the the more significantly, it was like in my personal life and in my business life, all the phone calls start happening. And it's like, that was a horrible time that I, I don't particularly like to uh, <laughs> to relive. Did you at least, despite that incredible turmoil, was there an outpouring of support? Did you feel at least some level of embrace then? I was very surprised by that. I think that letter got read over a million times. Oh it, goes, it got read, yeah. th that medium piece, I think was like 600,000 or 650, but then it got, got, reshared on other other media outlets mm -hmm. like the Daily Mail, I think the New York Post or something, they, they all put it out. My feeling at the time, the, the period before that, so again, this is not the whole story has been said here, but initially after the tweet, I apologized to try and kill it because it was like kicking a hornet's nest. They, they came, all these activists came after, not just me, they came after my whole band and their families and things like threatening, to, you know, to hurt us, hurt them. Uh, things like uh, going on, uh, someone went onto my Wikipedia page that night and changed it from Wiki uh, Winston Marshall is a banjo player to Winston Marshall is a fascist. <laughs> and my, I had a friend like helping me out, changing it back, but they, she was up all night because they kept changing it back. And I think it changed like six times. They, they do everything they can to destroy your reputation. Um, and, so I, I wanted to kill all of that. And 
I was like, maybe I don't know everything about this topic. Like, I just read one book. Like, maybe I, well, I, I mean, I knew quite a lot about the topic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was still open yeah, yeah. to, you know, thine ignorance of thine ignorance is thy fear as foe. You can, I, I was I accepted happily that I might not know the whole story. So then I looked into it. I issued this apology. Uh, uh, I spent a few months really getting into it, like uh, looking into the topic what my what were my blind spots what i i made made wrong and eventually i mean again i've said this story so many times so your listeners can find it elsewhere but eventually decided to publish the letter as you described and basically retracted my apology but the only way i could do that for various reasons i had to quit the band as well so it and then it it got it, as you say it kind of had a, a viral moment now but but at that point by the time i published the letter I just needed to clear my conscience. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. I was like, I've been part of the lie. Like this letter, this uh, apologizing when I'd done nothing wrong. I was like, what if I had kids? Like I'd be like such an embarrassing dad. Huh. I like basically a cuck that I had to do this letter. It's just, it was hum utterly humiliating for me. So the, the point for me, and, and there was other aspects too. Like I'm a musician. Our job is the pursuit of truth. So if I have this letter, like whatever I put out now is, it's like, it, it's degraded by the that letter. It 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 lo loses impact because I'm not. An, there's an amazing Salter Nitzen piece called "Live Not by Lies" that he published in 1974. Um, I think on the eve of his expulsion from Moscow, and I I'd read that maybe five times. It kept hitting me, and it, it's um you should you should read it. And there's one particular paragraph that's saying, "If you call yourself, how dare you call yourself an artist if you're not prepared to live by." The truth or pursue the truth. I can't remember the exact words, and that kept hitting me. And so, for me, when we pu for when I published, it was about getting my dignity and my soul back, and I and I did. So my initial response was like, <sighs> like my conscience is clean. So I was like, I kind of could relax then after three months of like inner turmoil, inner turmoil. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's a very long story. Sure, were, would you were you sure. <laughs> were you expelled from the music industry, or did a lot of people keep ties with you after that? A weird thing happened. There, there's certainly a few people in the industry that I stayed friends with, and funnily enough, so um, it's it's a it's a mixed one. A lot of people will privately, including major pop stars, will privately talk to me and say, "I agree with you," and I actually read that book, the band. Mumford and Sons. There was, I think in 2022, Marcus Mumford said they begged you to stay. Did you feel like you had that support? Uh, no one begged me to stay. So initially I was invited to stay, but the terms were I had to apologize and there had to be action. And uh, it, it was made clear to me that I would have to go along with the lie about all these politics things. Then when I explained my situation where it had, it was affecting me and I couldn't see a way forward, there was no pushback at all. So that's that's not true that that happened. But maybe there's a different interpretation on the other side, but it's not for me to say. But did that drive you crazy? Them knowing you for that long, and it's been very, it's been a very difficult time. Uh, yeah, um, it's it was it's still difficult. Yeah. yeah.